Hi everyone, in this video we will see that how the fifth parameter of table.group function in Power Query works and how we can use it in data cleaning problems. So let's say we have this table named as TBL data and within this table we have multiple sub tables. So let's say this is sub table 1, this is sub table 2, this is sub table 3 and this is sub table 4, right? And from this TBL data we wish to generate output like this in which we have the same columns here name, age, location, occupation and salary and an additional column region. So let's say these are the records corresponding to the first sub table and the region here is 1 because it was the first sub table data. Similarly here we have the records corresponding to the second sub table and in the region column we have the value as 2 because this was the data from second sub table. Likewise, we have that third sub table records and the region here will be 3 because the records correspond to the third sub table. And lastly, we have the data from fourth sub table and this region here is 4 because this is the fourth, this was the fourth sub table in the PBL data table, right? So, this is the out kind of output that we wish to generate. We wish to retain the same column names and wish to generate an additional column that is region here right so let's see that how we can do this thing using power query and how we can use the fifth parameter of table.group function smartly to achieve this kind of output so we will load this data into power query editor so we will click on from table slash range and now the data is loaded in query editor so as our first step we will remove this change type step and now we have this table loaded here and now what we will do, we will demote the headers, right? Why we will do demote the headers? Because if we see here, the second sub table starts from the sixth row, right? And if we see the structure of the second sub table, it has the headers. Similarly, the third sub table starts from 14th row. It also has the headers here. But if we see the first sub table, it doesn't have headers, right? The headers are used for the complete table here, right? Complete TBL data here. So we don't want that. We wish to keep the structure for all the sub tables similar. So for the first table, again, what we will do, we will demote the headers so that they are the headers for the first sub table here. So we will go to transform and use first row as headers. Used headers as first row. We will select this option. Use headers as first row. So now that we have selected this, again, change type step is generated. We can remove that and what we have done basically we have demoted the headers so now the structure is similar for all the sub tables for this first sub table we have the headers for the second sub table we also have the headers right so we have got common structure for all these sub tables here now what will be the next step so the next step will be to use table.group function so we have inserted this new step and now we will start writing table.group function so table group and the first three parameters of table.group function are required and the fourth and the fifth parameter are optional and when we are using table.group from the UI from transform tab or from the home tab that time as well we are dealing with only these three parameters the fourth and the fifth parameter in order to specify them we have to edit the M code and that's the topic of this video as well that how we can leverage the use of fifth parameter of power query using M code. So let's first of all see that how to specify these first three parameters and then we will move on to fourth and fifth parameter. So the first parameter here is table that which table are we trying to group. So it is the previous table that is demoted headers which we in which we demoted the headers comma what is the key. So let's say we are grouping them together on the basis of let's say column one. So we will write here column one. Then what are what are the aggregated columns right what are the additional column that we wish to generate so let's say we have to give them as a list of a list right so let's say we name the new column as all comma we call out we want each of the uh, rows in that table so each and underscore so we want each of the rows in that table right let's say this is the first aggregation that we want to do the second aggregation let's say is um, let's say count right so c o u n t count comma what we wish to get we wish to get table 
row count of each of the tables and we also have to use here each keyword we can also do like this so instead of each we could use let's say a function let's say we name it as tbl equal to and greater than sign here and use that tbl variable here right we could use anything instead of tbl as well so we will use tbl here and these are the two aggregations that we wish to do and we will close the bracket here right and this is the result that is generated here so we had four sub tables so name against name we have the 4s count and we can see that this is and this is what we got as a table which consists of all the rows right if we see here so this was row number one we got this row here in this table then what we got we got this row in this table right in this table why we are getting this because we are aggregating on the basis of column number one so here name and name they are same so all the rows in which column one contains name they are clubbed together and we are getting all the rows here and we are getting also getting the count of the number of rows that we have in that table let's say if there are multiple john does in the data so we will get them clubbed together here as uh, us in, in a single table here right so it is uh, grouping those records together those rows together and we are getting this as a result we can also do multiple aggregations here and we can also specify the types here as well right now we have done that we have explored the first three parameters we can now set the fourth parameter as well which is group kind so how does group kind works by default the group kind is global so what does global group kind mean let's say we have this complete table now in this table wherever we have let's say in column one name written here name written here they will be clubbed together in the complete table we will see globally right we will see in the complete table wherever in column one the aggregation column right the key that we passed here if we have name here they will be clubbed together but how does group kind dot local works what does that mean it will club rows on the basis of their consecutive occurrence so let's say here we have name but here we have john doe they both are not equal right so they will be separately grouped let's say here we have john doe and then and in, then in the third row as well we have john doe so they will be clubbed together right so they will be clubbed together the rows will be clubbed together on the basis of their consecutive occurrence so i have another video on group kind dot local and group kind dot global so i will attach the link of that video in the comment section below right so that's how group kind dot local works and group kind dot global works so let's try th that out here so by default it is group kind dot global so group kind dot global and the result doesn't change but if we use group kind dot local our, our result will change because this name the count here becomes one why because we have name here but the second occurrence of the name is here in the seventh row if name would have been in the second row only first row and second row consecutively then that would have been clubbed together right so most for most of them we would find the count as one because because none of the names are occurring together consecutively in column one right so this is how group kind dot local works and for group kind dot local the number is zero right we could use zero in place of group group kind dot local and if we use one here that means it is group kind dot global right so we will use zero here for our purpose we would need zero here group kind dot local so now comes the most interesting part of the video that is the fifth parameter and what is the fifth parameter fifth parameter is a function we have to write a function here and that function will have two parameters right that function will have two parameters so we will write our function and we will write our function in this manner right we will have uh, our parameters parameter variables within brackets and then we will have equal to and greater than sign here so let's say our first parameter we denote it by x comma second parameter by y and then we will use equal to greater than sign here right i i will explain that what does x mean and what does y mean in a while uh, first of all i will write the function part here right then we will have to write number dot from why we are writing it i will explain that number dot from and then we have to simply write x equal to y and this will do the job for us 
right now our tables are grouped together and we can see that this is the first sub table this is the second sub table this is the third this is the fourth sub table right only this part made this kind of segregation possible and let's say we add one more key here let's say column 2 so we have here column 2 we are grouping on the basis of column 1 and column 2 and we have these tables and again the result is not changed right i will explain all this part but i hope uh, this seems amazing because uh, writing only this much part and getting this kind of result is uh, is is very efficient right we don't have to do all those messier steps right in order to group these tables together so we got this result and how are we getting this let's try to decode this right what does x mean and what does y mean let's move on to the previous step here so let's say first time while grouping what this fifth parameter will do the function that we have passed will do it will assign the first row of this table as x right this will be x right and each of the rows below it will be treated as y right this will be x this first row will be x and each of the rows that are below it will be treated as y now what we are doing we are we have used this uh, this thing here x equal to y right is x equal to y or not so in order to check that what we are doing this is x and let's say the second row is y so is x equal to y that means that is name and age right they are clubbed together because we have used these two keys here so does values in these two columns match the values in these two columns here does name matches john doe and age matches 28 the answer is no right they are not equal so what it will do it will group these two rows together right then we will move on to third row again this is y and the first row is x right so what it will do it will compare x with y so now is name equal to jane smith and age equals to 35 the answer is no so again this third row will be clubbed together with the previous group the previous group is again con the previous group again consists of the first row second row and third row now then we will again check that thing for fourth row so is name right the previously assigned x equals to robert johnson and age equals to 42 the answer is no so again this will become part of the previous group that has that we are following right similarly we will move on and keep checking the corresponding values in these rows and when we check let's say michael brown with name so they are not equal 25 is not equal to age so again this will become part of the previous group right that will be clubbed together with them then we move on to the seventh row right and here we have name and name is equal to name age age is equal to age so now here the condition is satisfied the value becomes true here right we are getting a true here so that's where we are creating a new group right this is this marks the creation of a new group here so this is a new group for us and now the assigned value of x will be 7 here the first group ends here right the first group ends here so we have created the first group here and then and the next assigned value of x is this seventh row right this will become our x here right x will be name and age uh, combined together right then what we will do we will check the eighth row that is amanda miller with seventh row right values in the seventh row and this 38 with this age so they are not equal so they will be clubbed together as a single group then we will check ninth row values with seventh row values not with first row values but with seventh row values because that is x here now right so that will be checked with this seventh row so they have become uh, they are not equal again ninth row values and seventh row values so they will be clubbed together as a single group right and we will keep on checking until until we encounter a true condition here so again here we will check this 15th row values with 7th row values so again they are equal and and that's where the second group ends and we create another group that is group number three so here we have created group number two and we have started with group number three and now the value of x will be from this 15th row right name and age right and then we will check again 16 and 15th row 17th and 15th row 18th and 15th row 19th and 15th row and at 19th row the condition becomes true that is x is equal to y and that's where 
our previous group that is group number three ends and we are creating a new group and x is now becomes this particular row right and then again we will check y with x the previously assigned x and we will create another group so this is how this function is working we are checking for this logic uh, that is x equal to y and based on that we are grouping them together so until a true condition is uh, un until a true until we find a true condition we keep on grouping all those rows together right and when a true condition is found we create another group and the previous group ends right so so this is small part is doing all the magic that we can see as a result of using this fifth parameter and why are we using number dot from here we are using number dot from because this will give us the result as a boolean value right boolean value as a result true or false as a result and in order to convert those boolean values to numbers we are using number dot from uh, so we are using number dot from for that purpose right so we have generated this result here and also we could add let's say column 3 as well right and then also our result would be same here but the third column will be added here the third level of aggregation right so what we could do we could add all the column names that we have here as list to this step so what we could do instead of writing manually that as a list here what we could do we could replace this with table dot column names function so table dot column names column names and column names from the previous table that is demoted headers table and again the result is same but the fourth the fifth le five levels of aggregations are added here right and also we don't need this this is just for uh, reference that i added here that we could also uh, use functions we could also define functions like this and add as many as as many levels of aggregations we want to right so we can remove this and uh, this is what we have and finally let's say we have this table here right but now in in this table we could promote headers because now this is a separate sub table right this is a separate sub table it only contains data for these headers so what we could do instead of getting only the table back what we could do we could use table promote headers and we can promote headers for each of these tables right and if we see the result here we have promoted headers for each of these tables here so now we have transformed each of the sub tables here right 90 percent of the task is done now the next task that remains is adding region column to it right so this is region one this is region two this is region three and this corresponds to region four table right so what we will have to do we will have to add to this complete table another column named as uh, region so we will add our index column here right so we will use table add index column to this complete table or let's create another step for that so to the previous table what we will do we will have to add table add index column right add index column and it has again uh, two parameters as uh, required so we will use them so it will be let's say um, index right we want to name it as index and we have added this index column but it's, it, it starts from zero by default so we will we can use the third parameter here that is initial value so our initial value is one let's say so so this table corresponds to the first region so we have one here this table corresponds to the uh, second region so we have two here and again this table corresponds to the third region so we have three here right so now the next task is that for each of these tables here we add the region column on the basis of this index number that we have here so let's say in the first table we will add the region column in which all the values are one corresponding to this index column right for this table two we will add a region column for the values corresponding to this index column right so for that what we can do we can use table dot transform rows function so table transform rows and we wish to transform each of the rows in this right so for the first row we will be dealing with this all column and index column for the second table as well we, as well we will be dealing with this all column and index column so we are transforming this and the second parameter is a function so let's say in return we want each each record back right each record back so this has 
converted into a list of records. So the first record contains these, right? If we see the previous step, so this is the first record. Column one has name, column two has age, column three is location, column four is occupation, and so on. All has table. All is a table, right? This this all field value is a table here, and index is one. And let's say if we wish to see from this record all field right so we got tables here back let's say we wish to see index so we could write index here so we got index here now what do we actually want what do we actually want we want to use table add column so we are we will add a column to each of the tables so we will use here instead of index we will use all here right to each of the tables in that uh, record what we will have what we have to add we have to add a column and the name of the new column will be region right and our column generator will be each each value of the region column in each of the tables will be from index column right from from that index field right so we will use index here index and let's close the brackets so now we have got this table so what we have done okay so again there will be confusions because we are using each here and this each corresponds to each of the records right uh, so we are denoting to each of the records there and this is this stands for record but when we are using table dot add column function we have to again define a function here so we will use a different way of creating a function here we will use brackets and let's say we call that as i right so uh, each of the values for that i will be this and now i think this should work yes this is working fine now so we have got this as a result right so what is happening here basically first of all what we did we converted each of these rows to records so this table dot transform rows converted each of those rows as records and then we are transforming each of those records right so the value of index field was one for the first record and this this was the value this was the table for corresponding to all field right so what we have got we have got we got a list of records and then we transformed them what we did for each of the records we added a column there for each of the table there right and this was the table let's say for the first record the table was this one this is the table that we had and to that we added this column named as region and what was the value in that particular column uh, which we created that is region column it will be the value from the corresponding value in index record index field and that was one here right and we are calling that by i variable here so each of the values here is index that's what we have done here right we have added the regions here and we have got a list of all the tables and then finally we could use table dot combine function here table dot combine and let's close the brackets and if we see we have got the final output we have the regions and we have all the tables clubbed together so we explored table dot group by function fifth parameter in detail and then we explored table dot transform rows functions as well so now let's do one thing let's load this data to power query so let's say as table and new worksheet and this is the data that we have and let's check that our transformation matches the required output or not so what we will do we will use equals to this complete table is this equal to the result here or not right so we got all the values as true and in order to cross check that we could use and function here that all the values here are true or not so we are getting true here so that means our result generated is absolutely fine and the benefit of this is that if in future we add any number of columns here to each of these sub tables now this output is dynamic that's it for this video and i hope you will like this video please share your feedback in the comment section and any other suggestions or any other alternate solution to this if you, you would like to pitch in so that's it for this video thank you for watching this and stay tuned for more such videos in future